This is Surrey in 1996. In the Newton area, construction on a water disinfection project near 64th Avenue was about to begin. But likely, few people noticed, even though it would be important to their lives. It had to do with underground water pipes. Something there had the potential to become an unhealthy issue. To understand why, we need to roll back even further in time to the 1950s. At the time, about 200 kilometers of water main pipes stretched between the cities in the Lower Mainland. The region was expanding, and by the 1970s, about 150 additional kilometers of large pipes were added, along with many smaller pipes on new city streets. The water was traveling further and further from its source, which are large lake reservoirs up on the North Shore Mountains. Equipment and staff were brought in to track the water's travels through the increasingly complex web of pipes. And to move water through flat and uphill areas where gravity no longer does the job, pump stations were built. The 1970s also saw several new in-system reservoirs added to help ensure daily water supply was available for each local area. All this was being handled by the Greater Vancouver Water District. But outside forces would soon bring an entirely new aspect to the water system. Once again, let's roll back. There were no guiding regulations during the water district's early decades, so the water was simply screened, then sent through pipes to homes as is. But scientific knowledge about bacteria was improving, and in the 1940s, chlorine started being added as it left the three mountain reservoirs. Some folks didn't like that idea. Many residents were proud of their water's good taste, clarity, and lack of odor, and had difficulty understanding that disinfection could improve the water even more. By the 1980s, biological knowledge about water had expanded even further. Regional members and health authorities were asking, since chlorine's effect diminishes over time, would it still be effective as it slowly traveled way over here, and here, and here? Which brings us back to the Newton area in Surrey. A pilot study here in 1988 compared two secondary disinfection options for chemical components and effectiveness. The result? Eight secondary disinfection stations would be built to maintain chlorine levels throughout the region. And in 1997, the first one was installed in Newton. As the 21st century unfolded, work began on the creation of the first ever drinking water management plan. And in 2005, new standards began for all stages of drinking water, unlike ever before. It identified things like landslides in Metro Vancouver's mountain reservoirs. It was already known that tiny particles of silt and soil could shield bacteria from contact with disinfection chemicals. But increasing understanding of climate change effects means the destruction from storms would increase, so turbidity would go up too. Filtration was part of the answer. Through the early 2000s, a massive filtration plant was built at the Seymour watershed, along with twin 7-kilometer tunnels that carried water from the Capilano Reservoir for filtration and back again. The third source reservoir, Coquitlam, got an innovative disinfection and corrosion control facility in 2000, and another that uses ultraviolet light in 2014. Operations protocols have evolved too. This massive water reservoir tank in Surrey is being cleaned and inspected following precise guidelines. It's pretty old. One example among many in the complex flow management regime. A return to the Newton station in 2025 shows the careful work of disinfection and monitoring carries on. In a few years, this building, the little pioneer in the water quality system, will be rebuilt, along with other planned improvements like this pump station. Every year, the 520-kilometer system is being improved with larger pipes, new technology, and engineering advances that withstand earthquakes better. The population that Metro Vancouver has served for over 100 years continues to grow, and we all need reliable, safe drinking water. Guided by our modern scientific understanding of Metro Vancouver's unique water chemistry, this is what Metro Vancouver delivers.